I've been getting asked a lot about what my diet looks like for my Hashimoto's and celiac disease. So I wanted to give you an update because I haven't done an update video in several years. It's been nine years since I originally did the autoimmune protocol or AIP diet for my diseases. And then five years since I did AIP again because I had gone on a solely gluten-free diet for a little while, which solely gluten-free did not work for me back then. It still doesn't work for me right now. So I've been on my, I call paleo-ish diet now since 2018, and it really works for me. It's been able to keep both my Hashimoto's and celiac disease in remission, and I've only had a few what I call blips rather than full-on flare-ups of my symptoms in that time. Staying flare-free is not all diet, and I'll explain a little bit about that in a bit, but this is going to be more about what I do eat. I will be posting some what I eat in a day style videos as they have been very much requested, so I'll, I'll make sure I have those soon, but this is going to be more of an explanation of what I eat. So this is what I eat for my Hashimoto's and celiac diseases to keep them in remission. So I eat mainly a paleo diet, and what I eat freely are things like meats, seafoods, nuts, seeds, eggs, vegetables, fruits, fats, things like that. Of the paleo foods, I do try to limit my starchy carbs to under a cup in each meal. So things like sweet potatoes, white potatoes, cassava flour, tapioca flour, things like that. I wore a continuous glucose monitor for a year, and I really noticed when I ate more than a cup of those things that my blood sugar would really spike. And when my blood sugar spiked, I would also notice corresponding symptoms. Like I would get very, very sleepy and want to take a nap, irritable, I'd be shaky. And then eventually, if I did this day after day after day, then I started to notice my Hashimoto symptoms coming back, which my very first two typically are heart palpitations and a sore throat. So I did a lot of experimentation while wearing that CGM and discovered that as long as I kept things under about a cup, and some are a little less than that, I would be fine. I would have no ill effects. So that's where my sweet spot is and where I keep things for like those starchy carbs. Otherwise, the meats, the seafoods, all those things, I just eat as much as I want. Of course, I do go over that one cup limit every so often, but I try not to make it a regular thing. I've also had to cut coffee out of my diet a few times because I've gotten really jittery or I've started to notice some adrenal fatigue symptoms. But I've brought it back recently and I seem to be okay at one cup any more than I start to get those symptoms again. I can have green tea later and that doesn't seem to have any ill effects, but just one cup of coffee for me right now seems to be my sweet spot on that one. Then outside of this paleo kind of like bubble, I have a few foods that I can eat occasionally. Like I'll have them several times a month. Sometimes like once a week, things like that. So things like that are going to be rice, and that includes brown, white, wild, black rice. All of those different ones are fine as long, again, as I keep it under that one cup limit. Anything more, I get a big blood sugar spike and things just go south. Same thing with legumes and beans. At first, I did not tolerate those very well when I first started on this whole entire autoimmune diet journey. But now I seem to be okay with pretty much all of them, again, if I keep it under this one cup limit. And then gluten-free baked goods I have occasionally, again, a blood sugar thing for me. So if I have something that's really sweet, it's okay once in a while, but I can't have that and then have also a cup of rice and, you know, like all of this stuff in one meal. And I don't want to do them several times a day if possible. I try to limit these things. And then as for alcohol, I typically have a cider on Friday night. I love my stem ciders. And then also maybe a glass of wine every so often or a margarita if my husband's making it. He makes it from scratch. So there's no like of that weird stuff in it. So I'll have those every so often, but it's not like a regular thing for me. It's just a very sporadic thing except for my Friday night cider. Then I have the very occasional foods. These are things that in the past have caused me a lot of problems, but I seem to, after more healing, have been able to partake in them more without any sort of terrible effects. Sometimes I get a little gas and bloating and I'll be okay with that as long as I do it very occasionally. But as I explain in a minute here, I can do a lot more of these on vacation when I'm not stressed but I won't be able to do them as much at home, that kind of thing. So the first one is corn. 
If you've been following me for a long time, you may remember corn used to be my arch enemy. <laughs> Every time I would have it, I would get like pain and inflammation and all kinds of just negative things. But I am very stubborn and I kept trying it. And while I try not to have it very much at home, if at all, I will have it sometimes when I'm out. Like if we go to a Mexican restaurant, I'll have some tortilla chips. Or if we go to Mexico, I'll have some of the, the corn products there. But I don't have it on a regular basis. And then the same thing for dairy. At home, I love my BioLife vegan cheese. Love that stuff. But when we're out or on vacation, sometimes I'll have a little bit of a cheesy dish or I'll have dairy ice cream with the kids or something like that. But I still tend to stay away from like an entire cheesy pizza or something like that. I don't want that much, but occasionally I seem to be able to tolerate. That's the one that causes some gas and bloating. So I don't really necessarily want to do that, especially if I'm out with a whole bunch of people who wants that, right? But it it's not something that's going to cause me too much inflammation or anything or pain. So I've been okay with just having it again, occasionally. And as I mentioned before, I can tolerate these things a lot better on vacation. And I suspect it's because you have a lot less stress on vacation. So when I am traveling or on vacation, I tend to eat more gluten-free and not necessarily paleo. I don't stress about that at all. And after realizing how much more I was able to tolerate on vacation versus at home, I really started to recognize just how much of a part stress played in all of this. And I mean, it makes sense. If you are stressed, you're going to be in the fight or flight nervous system response. That means you're not in the rest or digest parasympathetic nervous response where you're going to digest your foods and absorb all the minerals and vitamins and nutrients and all of that kind of stuff that you need to function properly. So over the last few years, I've really dug deep into all of the different things that I could do to invoke the parasympathetic rest and digest mode as much as possible. And as a result, I have noticed that when I do that, I can tolerate more foods. And on the other hand, when I don't do that, I can't tolerate as many foods. And this also goes for exercise because exercise is a stressor on our body. And I have done a video on that, but the more intense cardio I do, or the more I do like in general, the less of the foods that I'm able to tolerate. So it really is this delicate balance of making sure that I am in as less stress as possible overall with exercise and getting sleep and making sure that like stress in general and all of that stuff is not taking over my life. And I'm spending more time in the parasympathetic rest and digest mode, and therefore I can tolerate more foods. I mean, this is one of the major reasons why I put stress relief tools and gentle exercises into my autoimmune collective membership. So yeah, if you see me on vacation or at one of the business workshops I go to, which several of you have, you may notice that I'm not eating paleo. And that's just because I just eat gluten-free on vacation and I save paleo for home. So 90% of the time I'm eating paleo at home. And then the other 10% of the time when I'm eating out in restaurants or on vacation or whatever, I'll eat gluten-free. And I have tried to do this gluten-free, less restrictive food thing at home where like I eat like I do completely on vacation and not worry about it at all. And it hasn't worked for me. I definitely do notice symptoms. So I think there is a certain level of stress that it's hard to get rid of perhaps, and because vacation is usually such a short amount of time, therefore I can get by with more on vacation, but at home on a general basis, I can't do it for very long. So basically it comes down to paleo being like the home base for me. When I'm under a lot of stress or I've had several nights of bad sleep, I've exercised a lot, or you know, just any of these things that cause me to start having heart palpitations or any of my initial symptoms, I back off on all of that. I make sure I get a good night or a couple nights of sleep. I really dial in my stress relief, make sure I ratchet back my exercise, and I eat a strict paleo diet for several days. And that has taken care of it every single time for the last five years. I haven't gone into a full-blown flare as a result, and it's really, really worked for me. Now, I want to stress that this is what works for me, right? And it may not work for you. I mean, I know several people who cannot at all tolerate eggs or nightshades 
or we're some people that can't even so much as look at a nut. So this is going to be very individual. This has been after years of experimentation, but I also think it's helpful to hear because some people think that we get stuck and that we can only eat certain foods forever, but it's simply not true. I've been able to expand my diet over the years as I've healed. And I want to share that with you so that way you can have hope that you may be able to do so as well. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to start posting some what I eat in the day style videos for my Hashimoto's and celiac disease. And you can always get recipes here on my YouTube channel, on my website, Instagram, and in my autoimmune collective membership. And finally, don't think I don't get to have some indulgent fun foods because I certainly do. Like these paleo empanadas, we have them once a month and I love them. And these are the exact kind of foods that I never thought I would be able to have once I did change my diet for my autoimmune disease and how wrong I was. I'll see you next time.